What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And though I am passionate about the Jacksonville Jaguars, trust me I am, but I'm trying to diversify this channel a little bit, kind of come up with new concepts, new video series ideas that aren't completely related to the Jaguars, but in some cases can be, as for example, today. So let me explain to you what is going on, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the first episode of Storytime with Treeb. So basically what I do is I come on here every Monday. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story from my life, uh, either childhood, recently even, something about my friends, something about my life, uh, something about why I, I am the way I am, you know, thing, things like that. Um, and I'm going to come on here on Mondays. I'm going to have a little bit of a coffee and discuss with you guys a little bit more about me so you know more about me. And because um, I always like to tell stories. I'm a storyteller. Um, I'm a talker, you know, in case you haven't been able to tell that already. So, ladies and gentlemen, to start the video series off, I thought, what better thing to talk about than something I get asked all the time? And no, it's not, are you a Bengals fan when I wear my wrestling hat? It's, how did you become a Jacksonville Jaguar fan? And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be answering that very question. So, ladies and gentlemen, take a seat Pour your coffee, get your vapes out, because it is time for story time with Treeb and how Treeb became a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. Oh, your boy, your boy had to pull out the beanie um, for this episode of Story Time with Treeb. So, some backstory before we hop into the story. My dad is a big, big, big football fan. He has been his whole life. Um, that's kind of what got him through some tough times uh, in his life. You know, football was always there. He's been a New England Patriots fan since the 1980s. You know, I was seven, seven or eight years old when, at the time, I knew, like, almost every single Patriot quarterback that happened before Brady, um, Steve Grogan. <laughs> I just remember that. I remember that, uh... I used to claim to be a Patriots fan in my younger years, and all these other little kids would be like, oh, I'm a Patriots fan too, I love Tom Brady. And I'd be like, who was their quarterback before Tom Brady? And who was their quarterback before Drew Bledsoe too? You know, I was quizzing kids because I, I thought I was cool and I knew everything, which uh, is still true to this day, obviously. So, before that happened when I was about seven, eight years old before I was schooling kids on the playground on how much football I really do know. Um, I hated football. Football took my dad away from me in a sense. You know, my dad was always watching football on Sundays when I wanted him to hang out with me and play with my action figures with me. You know, I thought it was stupid. I was really into WWE at the time. My dad thought WWE was stupid, so he didn't really um, pay too much attention to that. Um, mostly during football Sundays, my mom would be downstairs ironing, and I would literally watch the Howard Stern show when I was five or six with my mom while she was ironing and I was playing with my toys. Like, that was my Sundays. I just despised football. I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't understand it. You know, everything about it, man, I didn't want anything to do with it. And then one day came, and... This this game changed my changed my life. This game changed how I watched football and changed, you know, basically me watching football was all because of this game. And that game was the New York Giants versus New England Patriots in 2007, a whole decade ago, a whole 11 years ago now. But um, when the Giants upset the Patriots, man, I just, I remember how angry my dad was, but I just remember watching that and seeing, you know, the Giants being able to win the game and overcome the odds and do all that. And it was just, it was beautiful to see. And, and that game is what got me hooked to NFL football. That game got me to be a football fan. I was like, okay, I kind of understand the concept of this now. And I kind of am grasping the players and the ideas of what football is. Um, at this point, you know, being eight, nine, nine years old, something like that. <clears throat> and I decide, you know what? I'm going to get into football. So, naturally what a kid does when he wants to get into sports, 
um, at least in my day and age, you know, me being a millennial and everything, um, we play video games. So, um, I had a PlayStation Portable, a little PSP, back in the day, and you could never say you had a PSP at school because that was just a joke. That means you have a pretty small penis. If you say PSP, you're like, oh, guys, look at my PSP. Everybody's going to be like, no, I don't want to see your pretty small penis. Why would I want to do that? You know, that... So, you know, you, you couldn't say you had a PSP in school. That's a little bit of a sidetrack situation. You know, you had to go up to him and be like, hey, I got, you know, this game for my PlayStation Portable. And they would be like, oh, my God, a PlayStation Portable. I want one of those. But, um, anyway, my dad got me uh, NFL Street 3 for my PSP. Not my pretty small penis, my PlayStation Portable. And... I was scrolling through the teams, and obviously I started off playing with the Patriots because that's just the team I knew. Even though I was rooting for the Patriots to lose in that Super Bowl, I was kind of like, you know, I can't go against my dad. I'm going to have to be a Patriots fan through and through. That's my team. That's what I'm riding with. And, you know, I was playing with him. And, you know, Tom Brady was boring to play with because he wasn't mobile. You know, if you play sports video games, you know it's stupid not playing with a mobile quarterback. You know, you can't run out of the pocket, especially... You know, in Street 3, because I can't climb walls with Tom Brady because he's too goddamn slow. Like, you know. So, one day I decided that I'm going to play one game with every single team. And then I finally got to the Jaguars. And the, I loved their logo from the beginning, dude. Like, their old logo, that one back there. I just loved it. I loved the new one, too. And uh, I was just like... Hell yeah, Jaguars. Let's see what y'all got. And in that game, they had Fred Taylor, Maurice Jones, Drew, and trust me, dude, I just remember the first time I gave the ball to Fred Taylor in that game. He just busted through. You know, he's breaking tackles, running up walls. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's probably a fucking glitch in the game. But it wasn't Fred Taylor or Maurice Jones, Drew, in that game that got me to become a Jaguar fan. My first ever favorite Jaguar Don't make fun of me. Again, I didn't know anything about the franchise. I didn't know anything about football at the time, so you can't flip me shit. My first ever favorite NFL player was Byron Leftwich. For some reason, in Street 3, Byron Leftwich was a cheat code. He he could make every single throw. He could run to, you know, run up the walls and do everything. And I'm like, God, this guy... He must be so good in real life. Like, I cannot wait for the football season to start because that's who I'm going to be rooting for. I'm going to be rooting for the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is what I'm going to be doing. And I was so excited. I run up. I tell my dad. I was like, Dad, fuck the Patriots. (laughs) Of course, being that young, I didn't say that. But I was like, Dad, I'm not going to be riding with the Patriots. I'm going to be a Jacksonville Jaguar fan, blah, blah, blah. My dad's like, Jacksonville? They've never won a Super Bowl. They've only won a couple of playoff games, and when they did, it was in the 90s. Like, man, you need to... You really going to pick them? Okay. He was, he, was, he was a little concerned. He's like, if you're going to get into this journey, you better know what you're getting yourself into. And when I was that young, I really did not know what I was getting myself into, but obviously now I do. Um, so, the season kind of goes and... It goes, it goes, it goes, and then I'm like, all right, let's get this underway. My first ever full Jaguar season, oh, because I kind of left a big, I left kind of a big chunk out of the way, too. Before I even played Street 3, um, I, I, I mean, well, after I went on Street 3, I went on YouTube, and, you know, I watched that game, that David Garrard, uh, against the Steelers, uh, the last, the year, the year prior in 2007, um, when David Garrard uh, ran for, I believe, 20 yards and ended up getting in SCOBY field goal range, kicked the field goal, Jags beat the Steelers, as we usually do, um, and won that game. I saw that on YouTube, and I went up to my dad, and I was like, Dad, was Byron Leftwich hurt? Like, what? why is David? Gar- why is this Garrard guy in here? And they were like, I think you guys got rid of Leftwich. I'm like, what? What? And then, you know, I go back. I'm like, what team does he play for now? I was, and he goes, I think he plays for the Steelers. So I'm like, the Steelers, they just beat the Steelers. Like, and that wasn't their quarterback. Their quarterback was some fat white guy. And then my dad's like, I think he's a backup. I'm like, backup? How good is the starter? Byron Leftwich is the backup. You know, I was just astonished, man. Back, back, back then, dude, I thought Byron Leftwich was like Tom Brady, Drew Brees type of just legend. 
Like, I I loved Byron Leftwich, and I never, ever even seen him play a live Jaguar game. I only seen him in a video game. And I was like, this is my dude, this is my guy, this is who I'm going to be rooting for. Anyway, so my first full season as a Jags fan, the Jags ended up going 5-11. and 11. I didn't watch a lot of games, I listened to most of them on the radio. And the first full season in 2009 when I watched all the games was that was the year the Jags were teetering, teetering on becoming uh, a playoff team. And actually, dude, like, oh, I remember. I remember. I was posting on Facebook. I was talking to kids at school. I was like, dude, the Jags, man. And by this time, I was already playing football. Uh, that was another thing I, I failed to mention, but uh, after I started getting into football, I started playing football. I've been playing football since I was like fourth grade, stopped after senior year. Could have gone pro if it wasn't for a knee injury. No, I'm just kidding. That's not true at all. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I got into football. I started playing it. And, you know, every Sunday what I would do is I would watch football with my dad. My dad would watch the Patriots game, and then I'd watch the Jags game after him. It was very rare for some reason that uh, both both of us played at the same time at the time. But, you know, I watched all those games, and the game that stuck out to me the most, and the game that I swear to God is the reason that I'm still here today, and the reason that I still get excited and, and you know, will cling on to hope forever, was that Hail Mary David Garrard threw against the Houston Texans, man. Like, that game and that moment sticks out to me so much. Like, that is the time that I just remember my passion just being ridiculous through the window, dude. Just, that is, like, my team. These are my guys. And, you know, you'd get into conversations online with people. Uh, obviously, being from Idaho, I've never, ever met another Jaguar fan. So, you know, most of my interactions have been on the internet. That's why I make this YouTube channel. Because I am so goddamn passionate <laughs> about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, that is my passion. My passion is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that's kind of why I started back up on YouTube. Was because I was like, I'm passionate about this. I know I can talk well on camera. I have, you know, good takes. I saw everybody has bad takes. I've had some bad takes as well. Uh, most of them being related to Blake Bortles, you know. But... Um, and then the Jaguars have really helped me post high school because, uh, <sighs> coffee break. Um, in high school, I was all over the place. Like, I was doing everything. I was wrestling. I was playing football. I was a pretty good wrestler. I was all right at football as a rotational player my senior year. But, you know, those were the two things and the Jags I was passionate about. But then after high school, you know, I didn't really have much to be passionate about. So the only thing that really kept me going and kept me, like, sane and kept me, you know, motivated at least a little bit was the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, that uh, that was the only thing that has kept me motivated and that has, you know, given me some sort of passion. 2017 season, man. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how awesome that was. That was dope. My first, my first year out of high school... The Jags fuck around, make it to the AFC Championship game. I think that was another big, big, big part about why I am so passionate and why I love this team so much is because of the 2017 season. And that's why this year has been such a letdown and why I've been upset so much this year was because the 2017 season was such a high. And um, now we're kind of hitting the hard reset button. Like we've We've been doing that for a while, so hopefully maybe this time around... Uh, something works out. Uh, draft Dwayne Haskins. That's a that's a start. I think that's a start to uh, improving the franchise. But um, yeah, I can't even tell you, man. The Jacksonville Jaguars. I've still never been to a live game. Um, obviously, they're on the whole other side of the country than where I am at. But you know, I kind of sit here and I'm thinking to myself, you know, YouTube's going good. It's not going terrible. I have 630 subscribers, so when I started off in May, hasn't even been a year yet uh, since I started back on YouTube, but it's getting close. Uh, since May, I've gained 350 subscribers, and I'm so happy about that. But I'm hoping that a lot of you stick around for more shit like this, because not all Troop Story Times are going to be centered around the Jacksonville Jaguars. This one just so happened to be. 
And uh, it was a cool story. And I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people ask that question. I've answered this question quite a bit on uh, streams as well. But I thought I'd go out and give a detailed answer. Um, but hopefully you guys kind of rock with me, stick with me as this channel develops and keep on uh, working with me. Keep on subscribing, keep on watching, keep on hitting that like button. You guys are awesome and I'm going to continue to make kick-ass videos for you guys. And that was story time with Treeb, how I became a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Treeb Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Treeb Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody at work with me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.